Hello, my name's Mark and welcome to the Sim Hanger, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. And today we're looking at a hardware device that can help improve the level of immersion in our simulation. We're going to be focusing specifically on flight simulation, but today the hardware device applies across the genres of simulation. And we're looking at the Buck Kicker Gamer 2. Many sim enthusiasts would love the opportunity to have a six degree of freedom motion seat, but few of us have pockets deep enough to be able to afford one. The butt kicker being a physical device can add to the level of immersion by adding to the physical interaction with your simulator and specifically with your flight or racing simulation. So today we're going to be having a look at how to set up the butt kicker. What is it? How does it work? And how can it help improve the levels of immersion? We're also going to be having a look at the restrictions in terms of sound options with the butt kicker being an analog device. Window users will be all too familiar with the limitations of Windows in terms of mixing digital, USB or wireless sound and having analog sound at the same time. Well, I've got a quick and easy solution to stick around for that. So what does the butt kicker do and how does it work? Essentially, it takes the sound analog signal from your computer and feeds that through to an amplifier. From the amplifier, the information is then fed through to a transducer. A transducer is very much like a subwoofer. In a subwoofer, what would happen is you would see that that vibration would make the speakers move. In the case of the butt kicker, a weight is moved and that generates a vibration that's in sync with the sound coming from the computer. With the butt kicker, you get the transducer or tactile vibration device, your amplifier, which is also your control unit, with a remote control and a selection of RCA cables and Velcro strips to secure cables. You also get an analog signal splitter, so if you wanted to run speakers and the butt kicker simultaneously, you can do so. Also included are a set of fairly basic instructions which show you the basic setup, how to fit it to the pillar of an office chair, although it can be fitted to the leg of almost any chair. The clamp is very versatile indeed, and it also covers some of the details required for mixing analog and digital sound. For all things Flight Sim, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications. Making this video has been on my to-do list for quite some time. I've never been quite sure how do I demo it. The butt kicker itself doesn't visibly vibrate. The vibrations are transferred to the chair that you're on. And the unit is not particularly noisy. So I came up with the idea of showing the vibration through some water in sync with the flight in X-Plane. So bear with me. Let's have a look at the butt kicker in action. For this demonstration, I had the butt kicker attached to the leg of a small table and the glass of water on the table. First of all, we're having a look at a startup and you can see the vibration there. Getting more now as the engine speeds up. And then once it gets up to speed, you'll see the vibrations diminish as the engine settles down and the vibrations are still there, but not so intense. The takeoff now, the grass runway. This is Orbix Kilo Bravo Victor Sierra. You can see the vibration there as we bounce down the runway. In fact, if you look closely, you can see the glass is actually starting to move. And then as soon as we're in the air, it's still vibrating, but not nearly as intense as would be the case in the real world. Unfortunately, with the gear coming up, I didn't really get much of a feel of the gear coming up. 
I then tried an external view and did you see that just as the aircraft came past and lastly a landing for this demo I'm just using X-plane and the butt kick and nothing else and we're down and again the glass is moving Let's have a quick look at the individual components and we'll start off with the transducer or butt kicker itself. It's made completely of metal. It feels sturdy, it's well made, solid, weighs about a kg and a cable is attached with a quick release fitting. The clamp itself is very versatile as I mentioned and designed to be able to fit different types and shapes of legs. It's ideal for fitting onto the circular pin or center pin of an office chair. The shape there, I'm not sure why, whether it's heat sink or not, and this is where the weight is that vibrates. Moving on now to the amplifier. The first impression is that it's well made. It has four feet, so it can sit sturdily and not slip. This unit obviously doesn't vibrate in itself and it also comes with a handy stand so you can have it mounted vertically if space is an issue for you. Very useful, in fact that's the way I have it. Looking at the front now, we've got a power button. All the other controls affect the frequency and the intensity of the vibration. You've got a low fill to cut off your modulator control as well as a high frequency cutoff. In addition to a signal light, you've got the red clip light that'll indicate whether or not you need to adjust your volume. Volume or intensity buttons are shown by the plus or minus and you have a remote plug. The cable coming from the amplifier to the butt kicker fits in here. This is for your sound, your RCAs, a power on and off and your power cable. Turning now to the remote control, you've got the plus and minus, so as you press that it will vary the amount of vibration and intensity of the vibration as well as a power button. Very useful, particularly if you're on a long flight or away from the desk at any one time. You've also got your main cable from your amplifier to your butt kicker. The cable from the butt kick is about a meter long and this one about three meters long. So about four meters of cable overall. And finally your sound cable, the RCA. And on this side, if you were using the splitter, one you would plug into the butt kicker and the other one your speakers. Attaching the butt kicker to a chair is fairly simple and easy. Open up the clamp. Place it round the centre column on your chair and tighten up the clamp. You just have to be mindful where you put it because it could affect the raising and lowering of your chair if it's got that height adjustment on it. For the amp you attach your power supply there, leave it switched off until everything's connected up and then using the longer cable with the two prongs that is now connected, simple and straightforward, it doesn't matter which way round you have it. And again your RCA cable for your sound. Again it doesn't really matter in which port you plug each one in because it's a single source analog sound. And if you're using the remote that's simply plugged in at the front. Just be careful which way you push it in. It only fits one way and can quite easily be damaged. So care is needed here. And lastly, the quick connector between the amplifier and the butt kicker. Again, it only goes in one particular way and clips in together at the bottom. And that silver clip there, you just press that for a quick release. 
so that if you want to move the chair around whilst not using the butt kicker, you can. In Windows, when you connect sound via a USB, be it wireless or cable, it automatically disables the analog sound and this will obviously cause a problem for the butt kicker. There is a workaround in Windows 10, but I've had inconsistent results and it's a little bit buggy, so I'm not going to cover it here. I will be covering a number of options to overcome this problem, but the one that I recommend is VB Audio software. Not only is it free, but it is simple, quick and easy to set up. The software from VB Audio is VoiceMeter. And it's available, as I said, free, it's donationware, and it can be downloaded either as a zip or as an executable file. It's only 10.5 megs in size, and it has a user manual as well as tutorials. Once downloaded, run the executable and it'll be installed. Then go to your Windows Sound Properties, and under the Playback tab you will see the Voice Meter input is now there. Make that the default device. In this example, I want to use the butt kicker with my 2100 wireless USB headphones. Go to the recording tab. I pick my wireless headphones, the Vengeance 2100, and set that as the default device. That's it, I'm done. I can now close the sound windows properties and start the voice meet application. It takes a few seconds just to analyze your configuration. On the right hand side you'll see two tabs, A1 and A2. These are your two audio outs. So for the first one I'm going to pick my Realtek High Definition Audio, which is an analog system, to my butt kicker. And for the second one I'm going to choose my Vengeance 2100 USB wireless headphones. And that's it, I'm done. I now have the USB digital output and an analog signal simultaneously going to the butt kicker. To maintain this configuration, you do need to run it minimized or on your desktop. Voice Meter does only allow you to have two hardware outputs for your sound. There are other programs that give you more options. Let's take a quick look at these. The next option we're going to look at is also from VB Audio and it's called Voice Meter Banana. Yep, I didn't choose the name. It's also donationware and it's just under 20 meg download. And what this does is give you three hardware audio outputs, so slightly more versatile and more configuration settings are available. Another option is VAC or Virtual Audio Cable. Now this is a very, very powerful and versatile program, but certainly not for the faint-hearted. Links again in the notes below. There are also a number of programs that will enhance the butt kicker's interaction with your program. The first one I'm going to mention is SimVibe. It costs around about 89 US dollars and is specifically for racing fans. And it allows for the configuration of more than one transducer. In the documentation it says it can be used for flight sim. From Andre's shop comes SimShaker. SimShaker Wings allows you to configure all aspects of the sound within your flight simulation. It supports Explain and Prepared and there's an add-in module which gives you the transducer or shaker support. Both are payware. Previously linked to and working with the SimShaker developer is SimShaker for Aviators by F410. This is a freeware add-on which according to the documentation will allow you to configure the butt kicker specifically to your flight sim and vary the intensity of the responses. SimHub or SimHub Dash caters mainly for racing fans and it covers just about every popular racing program that's out there at the moment and being played regularly. But it does support one flight simulator and that is War Thunder. Not only am I a flight sim enthusiast but I'm also a VR enthusiast. 
and I do most of my flying in VR. And I find the butt kicker just adds that extra level of immersion and realism in VR. Highly recommended from my side, 8 out of 10. Prices and availability vary considerably. In the UK, it's around about the £200 mark. I would suggest wherever you are that you shop around, use your favourite search engine and have a look what's available. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the butt kicker. I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell for future notifications. See you soon. Bye for now.